Welcome back to Africa 54. New development tonight in both vaccine and malaria research. Joining us now is our health correspondent, Renor Mudu, with those stories. Welcome, Lenor. Hello, Mariama, and hello, everyone. Scientists are getting a helping hand in their efforts to make vaccines more resistant to heat. As you know, most vac vaccines must be kept cold and transported under constant refrigeration via a so-called cold chain. This is a significant challenge in hot remote regions like Africa. But GlaxoSmithKline and the Gates Foundation will invest a combined $1.8 million for new research. One of the first projects will explore how to make adjuvant a critical component of some vaccines more heat stable. Joining us via Skype from Brussels, Belgium, is Dr. Gerald Voss, Director of Global Affairs with GlaxoSmithKline Vaccines. Dr. Voss, welcome to the program. Pleasure being with you. First of all, tell us about some of the observations in terms of the challenges that have been, have been seen on the ground in some region with regards to vaccine storage and transportation. Sure. Let me maybe first uh, uh, put this into a broader context uh, by mentioning that actually cold chain is one very, very important factor and ingredient of global access to vaccines. And if you look at vaccination in a, a holistic way, it is probably the most sophisticated and also cost effective health, uh, public health intervention that we have so far. And it has had a huge impact on many, many infectious diseases like like uh, diphtheria, polio, etc. I belong to a birth cohort that has still received smallpox vaccine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the scars, the vaccination scars on my left arm, they are a constant reminder that it is even possible to completely eradicate a, a, an infectious disease from uh, the surface of this planet. And so on that backdrop, coming back to your question, cold chain is really a key ingredient and factor in uh, uh, bringing vaccines from the manufacturer to the people who need them. So reducing, you, reducing dependency on coaching is definitely the, one of the aims of this partnership. How will that be possible then? So I think uh, the cold chain really poses a lot, of question, uh, a lot of challenges, as you have mentioned, rightly so. And it really, the chain, it is a chain. It, it spans from the manufacturing facility to the end user. And the problem is, how do you actually uh, keep this cold chain more or less uninterrupted and how do you make, uh, uh, do you have enough capacity to, that you can roll out vaccination on a large scale? So that again, that is the overall question. The particular project that we are aiming at uh, will really work on a specific component of a vaccine, which we call an adjuvant. It is basically a potentiator of the strength of a vaccine and will try to render this key component more thermostable. And quickly, and, uh, you will be focusing on the RTSS vaccine against malaria to begin with? That is absolutely correct. And so that would be kind of the first example where we will basically investigate different avenues of technological improvement and innovation. Uh, but having said that, I think if those results look encouraging, we will hopefully be able to apply them to other vaccines so like vaccine. our HIV and TB vaccine. Quickly, do you think this will also perhaps uh, help reducing the cost of vaccination in general in the future, very quickly? It, it, it is very difficult to tell at this early stage, but uh, I would not exclude that. The other thing is if we can render a vaccine more thermostable, it may not actually have an impact on the cost of good, but it may overall in the whole picture and delivery may uh, lead to some cost advantages. Okay, Dr. Voss, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It was a pleasure.